uh, a local government uh, uh, councillor, local government. You know those they call councillor? Yes, sir. Local government level? Not chairman of the local yes, government, just councillor of the local government. Now have opportunity to travel to Israel. For all these, uh, this one that some Christian used to go to Jerusalem and come back. So he went to Jerusalem and he came back. And then after that, daddy didn't see him in church. Please follow this man up. He, I thought he said he had gone to Israel and come back. We are not seeing him in church again. Somebody should go and follow up. So they got to the house. I are not seeing you in church now. What's the problem? He said, when I came from Jerusalem, you people did not come and welcome me. Yeah. <laughs> I came from Jerusalem. Everybody came here to greet me. Even my church member, they didn't come and welcome me. That's why I know. <laughs> You can't sell off local government. <laughs> can't sell <off. laughs> Went to Jerusalem and come back and say we didn't bring drum to come and welcome you. <laughs> if we are governor, where will we live? <laughs> <laughs> are you hearing me? The attitude of people at their little level is what disturbs them from becoming anything great in life. Mm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Use your present period to develop yourself for a greater tomorrow. There is still something greater than this place, my brother. I told you of university president 80, what, is it 84? From, and I was president of Chemistry Semester. I went to University of Israel, I didn't go to OAU. <laughs> my son just graduated from OAU, but that's OAU. The one I went to is University of Israel. <laughs> it's a lot of difference. <laughs> Praise God. Now <laughs> you get what I'm saying. <laughs> Praise God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So I want you to understand that what some people now carry. It is 84, 94, 2004, 2014. Over 30 years. Some people are not even born then. Hello? And right now, we still want to go to some higher institution to go and do crusade. And the people there say, who is that man? I don't know him. We are president here. What's he coming to do? Has who gave him permission? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> this position you are, you are boasting about. I was holding that position in 1984. But there are many people that held the position too. And they didn't become anything after. Praise God. So it is not the position you hold today that determines your future. But the advantage you take using those positions to develop your spirit, to develop the inner man, to develop your calling, to develop the divine mandate of God that's already deposited inside your life. Those are the things that determine what you will become. Praise God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So this opportunity to be part of those that will go to Egypt, don't miss it. Write your name down with Oga Tobi, Oga Femi, and Oga Shalom. Praise God. Hallelujah. Either today, tomorrow, or day after tomorrow until we finish this prayer. And you keep announcing it every night. Are you getting what I'm saying? Those who want to go, the crusade is 5th to 11. As many as want to go, I like them to. It's, it's an opportunity to see what God is doing. Fresh. Life and then be a part of it. You can train being a pastor, going around pastors and helping them. They put you on self, self fellowship and all that. You know, you pastor some folks and all that. And that's okay, that's okay, that's okay. But if you are looking for a raw manifestation of God's power, let's go to Igoro. Praise God. Are you get what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? And it's going to be great. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mm. Is there not a cause? Is there not a reason? Is there not a purpose? Let the purpose of God be stronger than any other thing you are doing. Praise God. Purpose of God in life is superior to any other thing you are doing. Let God's plan and purpose be superior to every other thing. Let God be number one in your life. Seek first his kingdom. All other things can be an addition. But don't put God last after you have considered every other thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Praise the living Jesus. Mm. All right, maybe we should go a little further now and then add some things to all that we have started with. In the morning, I started with John chapter 5, talking about healing. John chapter 5. And then I read from verse 1. Let me read it again. As our text. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In this lay a great multitude of impotent folks, of blind, halt, without waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then, first after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. And when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now long in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Say, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another stepped down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and he took up his bed, and walked, and on the same day was Sabbath. Hallelujah. Now, I said, from this passage, first thing you will notice is, from verse 1, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem for that feast. Whenever we come to the house of God, or come to a garden like this, God is preparing a feast for his people. Hallelujah. Feast of fastings. Feast of meal. Feast of food. Feast like a buffet, where everybody is to eat until you are satisfied. Where everybody is to be filled up until they are satisfied. Praise God. Are you getting what I'm saying? And the food we are taking at that feast is prepared by God. God is the one that is after our being healed, saved, delivered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God is interested in you being saved, being healed, being delivered, being made prosperous. And is organizing a feast for you to come and have that. God always wants people healed, saved, delivered, helped. That's his plan. And he will do anything to get it done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you get what I'm saying. And again, when you look at the feast of the Jews, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. I said, now there is a Jerusalem by the sheep market. There are different kinds of market, but you call this one sheep market. A pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. So that pool is like a body of water. And the Bible now says there are five porches. That means one pool, but five different entrances or channels. Hallelujah where you can assess what is made available inside the pool. Hallelujah. So healing power of what is available inside the pool, but there are different channels by which you can receive them. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm saying? God will not just give man just one channel. Why you can't stop the proliferation of churches and ministry is that God will always look for any way possible to be able to reach man. There are people that will never come to where I'm preaching. For their sake, God must look for somebody that they can listen to. Hallelujah. And you get what I'm saying? A man of God many years ago said when God called him, uh, he used to, I think he read the law. At the same time, he also liked music. And uh, apart from law, he started, and he has even watched some record that hits the market very strongly. As a unilateral person or whatever, and became popular in Nigeria and also in Nigeria as a musician. How can you read law and be talented in music? 
Praise God. Are you getting what I'm saying? So he became well known in Nigeria for music, not for long. Then somewhere along the line, maybe went outside to read or something, I don't know the full detail, but I knew he got born again. And then God wanted to use him as a pastor. Ah. And now said, this one, if I'm born again, it's still good enough. But for me to come and become pastor, that would be another problem. Because my kind of lifestyle, <laughs> praise God. Back home in Nigeria, nobody will welcome my own kind of lifestyle as a pastor. Because I have to shave my hair. I have to look like uh, W.F. Kumi. Those are the great men of God in our country. And God said, no, no, no. I'm not making another Kumi. Praise God. Because there are people that are still in Nigeria who, oh, till they die, they will never attend deeper life church. So there are those kind of people that will like this, your kind of hairstyle. Hmm? Mm. And they won't like that of a uh, Kumi. So I want you to remain yourself. But just have the life of God inside of you and have a message that you are taking to your generation. And then go back there. Hallelujah. And then go and start your own church. But don't try to copy Kumi at all. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Is somebody hearing me today? The man has a very powerful church in Lagos. And I think he has taught a number of other countries, not only Nigeria. After working for God for a number of years. So he created a niche for himself. Doesn't change his hairstyle. Doesn't change his kind of nature. He just stopped that music and stopped law and started church. Hallelujah. Everything about him has been going whatever, whatever. And I, my point, the point I want to make with his life is that he left all those whatever and God said, don't try to be like Kumi. Because there are people who will never go there. But if you look as you look, but you have the same God, there are people who will like your look. And so they will come to your church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have you read your Bible and hear what the Bible said about Jesus Christ and John the Baptist? John the Baptist fasting all the time. Eating locusts and white one. Clothes, no good clothes. Animal skin. Very consecrated, committed to God. Stays in the bush, come to the bad down once in a while. Praise God. Do what about to see? Go back to the bush. That's a kind of life. And some people still did not believe in him or come to his church. But they cannot say God did not send them. You can't ever say in this that John the Baptist is not of God. Somebody will chop off your head for saying that. And you hear what I'm saying? So they don't like him, but they can't ignore him. Praise God. And here comes Jesus. And it is this John the Baptist that said, Somebody is coming after me. The shoe lashes of whom I cannot remove. In fact, he's greater than I. He's not yet around, but when he comes, I will show you. Israel must follow that man when he shows up. Because from the beginning, he has been greater. He is higher than me, he's anointed than me, and all that. Everybody's who is this man? You are the great man of God. We know who are you talking about? Ah, when he comes, I will show you. Finally, Jesus came one day for water baptism. And say, Hey! Behold, this is the Lamb of Israel that taketh away the sin of the whole world. Fine. This is the man I'm talking to you about. Hallelujah. And he said, hey, I'm not worthy to do water baptism for you. You should even baptize me, sir. <laughs> Master. Now, that's how the ministry of Jesus Christ started. Jesus left him after water baptism. Heaven opened. Saw the Spirit of God spoke. Then he went to the wilderness, fasted 40 days and 40 nights and came back. Boy, he didn't wear an mask. Praise God. Neither was he fasting. After that, 40 days, he was sitting. Praise God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He was eating. He was wearing good clothes. In fact, some people say his clothes are so powerfully sewn that you can't see the place where the sewing you no know, it's like a fashion designed suit to make 
suitable for his own stature. Praise God. Very powerful, not dazzling. Clothes. You know? Right. That when he died, people were not ready to cut it. They said, ah, if we cut this one because we want to say, ah, it will be, we will be stupid. We will be foolish. Stupid. This is costly. We cannot cut this kind of thing. So let's cast lots. Somebody will have to take it. We cannot cut it into two or three. Praise God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, so he was clothing himself correctly, not wearing animal skin. He was eating well to the extent that they said he's even a gluten. That he is going to eat in the house of people like uh, even Zacchaeus and Co. Which everybody knows that this is tax collector, EFCC candidates. <laughs> Can you be eating in the house of people like that? Huh? And you say you are a man of God. And then another woman that we all know to be very, very bad when it's immorality. Has five uh, husbands and many things like that. He will go to their house and eat. Mary, Martha, all those people. Ah, can you be be friend with these people? Mary Magdalene, that you cast out seven demons, you still go to his house to eat. Ah, you should know this is a serious man. Praise God. He was doing all that as if he's directly opposite to John the Baptist, who will preach in the uh, river Jordan and go back to the wilderness and live like that. He doesn't live among human beings, he lives in the bush. Praise God. And Jesus can sleep in the house of Peter today and sleep in the house of Matthew. And you know Matthew was tax collector. Hello? Are you getting what I'm saying? Then another day will be in the house of John. John is very rich, has a house in Capano, has another one in Galilee. Praise God. Are you getting what I'm saying? So he moved with different people like that. Another time he said he wants to do his uh, uh, maybe last supper. I said they should go to the house of one man that at the upper room of the man's house there is a very big no place there. Let them prepare the place for Lord's Supper. Conference room. Conference room. what you get there. Praise God. With a long table that can take 12 disciples. Not the one of your dad that takes only four. One here, one here. This one is long. Praise God. Somebody's upper room can take all that. Say, follow a man. When the man enter the house, tell the man, tell your boss, I'm doing Passover in your house today, you should prepare the place. And he prepared everything. I'm sure that man must be a rich man. If you are not a rich man, you can't have that kind of house. As your upper room, that's not even your sitting room, that's not your dining table, that is just one upper room special. Praise God. Hallelujah. And you hear what I'm saying? Now, so you see the life of Jesus, almost directly opposite of that of John the Baptist. Praise God. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? But when we eventually see Jesus Christ talk about the two, he said, I am not John the Baptist, and John the Baptist is not me. But God is the one that called John the Baptist. God also is the one that called me. He called, you see, it's like children that are playing. Are you getting what I'm saying? And one, you play the music of uh, morning. You know the kind of music you play when people die? You know, it's not going to be a very fantastic movie. Everybody is mourning, mourning. Somebody is wearing black, black. Another one is just doing stuff. So there is a song for that place. There is a song for bad day. Praise God. Are you going to say, God, in his wisdom, has decided to choose one who is going to be somebody that you will be as if you are playing the kind of music that is played in Beria Grand. Another person is using him as somebody that is playing the kind of music that is played in bad day ceremony and marriage ceremony. Praise God. Hallelujah. Did you ever see John the Baptist in marriage ceremony? <laughs> Never. What are they doing there? <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. He's too anointed to go to marriage ceremony. What for? But well, Jesus will sit down there. And we help them change their wine. When wine finish, supply people, supply, supply. So it's like directly opposite to John the Baptist. But God said, wisdom has decided to give us different kind of children. Back to my point. 
Five touches mean five different ways by which we can assess the power of God for healing. God will never give only one because not everybody will be able to assess one. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, Did you get the point I'm trying to make now? Yes, that God will definitely find a place that you will be able to assess the power of God. God will always find a person that can be easy for you to approach. God will always find a person, an anointed man that you can relate with easily and it will be easy for you to take what he has brought. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are those who love me. There are those who hate me with a passion. That man, ah, no, 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 I can never learn me in my fellowship. Lie, lie, that man. All those things he used to preach. I, I like people that talks about money and how to grow. I mean, you see stuff, but he's just been so probable. Is everything done? Tongue, 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 I keep doing what he asked me to do. Praise God. Hallelujah. No problem. Problem at all. <laughs> but those who God has attached to me, they must know what God is sending them to learn from me. That's why I said you must go to crusade. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There are things we see there are raw that you never see in any other place. You won't even see them here. Because here when we say we want to minister healing now, how many people are sick that we were going to minister healing? Maybe one and a half or two. <laughs> Praise God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are no real practical here. You go to wear plenty day. Praise God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> I was preaching in Uganda. I was standing like this. The place is very small. And they brought one very sickly child. As I'm preaching, I'm looking at the face of the child. I <laughs> hope this child will not die before I finish from this child. Because <laughs> it just, the eye is already white. Just, and skinny as if somebody's malnourished. But I didn't know that for a long time he's not been able to swallow food. So it's half alive, half dead. The mother just dropped her by the side of the preacher like this and went back and sit down. Mm. Ah! <laughs> Please go! So considering you say you don't see it, you can't pray and say, Father, heal them all. <laughs> Praise God. Are you hearing me? You know, you can do some abracadabra and say, Oh, no, I You know, there's no money away here. Hey, Praise God. There are practical things you see when you go out, my brother. They make you know that it's either you are called or you are not called. And it's not fake about you are a bishop or you are a reverend or apostle. You can call yourself anything until when you see it, real, real trouble. <laughs> I'm talking, talking to you, my brother. When you see real trouble, all those your title will change. You will change straight. They call you bishop. Say that's not enough. Apostle, okay, okay, no problem. Call yourself anything. But the day you see real trouble, <laughs> they said the Saul is the tallest man in Israel. When he saw Goliath, who sat at the table. <laughs> They said the day they were making him king, they said he's the tallest man in his life. Shoulder higher than everybody. Mm. Mm. Local champion. Mm. Correct. And he kept on being the king all over the place. The king. Tall man in his life. Tallest man. He's tall in his own father's farm. When you get to another man's farm, you will see some other people taller than that. Praise God. The day Goliath showed up like this, Goliath actually came for some. Yeah, he came from his house looking for Saul. He just did not want to mention his name. He thought he, it's only Saul he came from. Praise God. Praise God. Praise 